I am coming to you with answers to your questions. <laughs> Thanks for clicking on Simply Tanika. I am Tanika. If you are new here, welcome. Hit that subscribe button. Let's hang out a while. If you are returning, welcome back. Let's get those babies, ladies. What's up, Fertility Fam? How are you? I hope you are well. I see the crystal raindrops fall and the beauty. All right, you asked. I am going to answer. I wrote them all down. Thank you for all of you who had questions, um, both anonymous and publicly. I appreciate you. I will do my best to answer all of these questions. And if there's anything left, let me know down below. If you are new here, welcome. Let me know what brings you, where are you uh, in your journey, and what can I do to support you. And if you are returning, welcome back. What's up, Fertility Fam? All right, question number one. Can you please let us know if you ever tried Clomid? If not, have you or your doctor ever considered it? If not, please indicate why the doctor would not allow this procedure. And I actually had two questions that were similar to this. Um, the other one was from Nanette887, and she asked, I wanted to know if you were ever prescribed Clomid. If you did, what was your experience using it? So I'll answer both of those at once uh, because they are similar. I have not tried Clomid. Um, I was concerned about the increased cancer risk, um, the thickening of cervical mucus, and the thinning of the uterine lining. Um, so when I went into my first RE, I um, suggested that I use Femera, and we talked about it together, and she thought it was a good idea. Um, Femera is also a breast cancer treatment drug, and so because I had a breast cancer scare, because I had um, cervical cancer scare before, like I was really... Uh, concerned about that so I did I've not ever used Clomid and that's why um it's not something that the doctor just decided like we talked about it together and came to that um treatment plan together um I have used Femera um I've had occasional headaches on Femera and a little moody but nothing crazy um I know some TTC sisters who use Clomid and report that it is a beast um so I'm glad I have not used that actually all right question two why not use a donor egg? I think it's a very personal choice, right? There's no, what's right for me is not what's necessarily right for someone else. And I think we have to do what we feel in our heart. And what my heart desires is to have my own biological child um, and have a biological sibling for my daughter. And so I am not um, going to consider donor eggs at this time. I thought about it and it's just, it's not what my heart desires. Anyone who's doing it, no judgment. It's just not for me. All right, um, advanced age due to insurance. What challenges have you faced with insurance? Do they cover fertility treatments? Is there an age gap after a certain age? What's not covered? Um, is everything at this point out of pocket? So with my particular insurance, with my particular employer, um, after the age of 35, IUI is not covered. So I pay for my IUIs, I have paid for them out of pocket. Um, at the current REI, I pay 660. At the prior one, it was like about 250. Um, I pay $50 out of pocket for my copay for the Avadro um, HCG trigger shot, and I pay about 253 bucks for the Femera. The rest of it, the scans, the blood work, uh, everything else is covered by insurance. Um, some other gaps that they have, so they will cover IVF up till age 50. However, after 45, they will only cover it with donor eggs. Um, they will cover a full year of cryopreservation for any eggs uh, or any uh, blastocysts that need to be frozen. And I think that's it. Um, yeah. But fertility meds, labs, blood work, all that will be covered until I'm 50. After that, no dice. Um, does my insurance cover IVF? If so, how much? If not, is it all out of pocket? Again, they will cover it all um, up to age 50, up to 44 with your own eggs, after 44 um, or 45 or older with donor eggs. Um, do you have a set limit of tries with some of cycles as insurance pay or do you have a set limit of cycles in your mind? So they will pay for two rounds of IVF for a lifetime 
and it's through age 50. There is no limit on the IUI. I'm paying for those out of pocket, the actual um, procedure. So there's no limit. Again, the meds and everything else will be covered until I'm 50. Um, in a perfect world, I would keep going until I had my baby, right? But in reality, knowing um, what I know about TTC now, what it takes on you physically, mentally, financially, um, I had said previously that I would go into the end of this year. And I think I'm going to stick to that with flexibility to go until I'm 48, which would bring me until May of 2019, depending on how things unfold uh, at the end of this year. And I'll get more into that in another question. Um, what app do I use? Is it free or the paid version? Um, so for fertility apps, I use two. I use uh, Fertility Friend, which I love. I started using that when I started charting last year. And it is very um, assisted reproductive friendly, so art and as well as um, same-sex couple friendly, um, which I like for both of those. So I can put in that I'm having an IUI or IVF and not put in that I'm having sex. Um, the other app that I use is Ovia, and that one is very much focused on heterosexual intercourse, um, which if you're doing that, it's great. But like, it doesn't recognize things like an HCG is going to trigger ovulation, where Fertility Friend recognizes that. Um, for a while I had the Fertility Friend uh, paid app, and then I wasn't getting that much benefit from it, so I, I just use the free one now. Um, the paid one gives a little more detail, but for me, like, it just wasn't worth it. Um, yeah, those, those are what I use. I'm open to trying some other things. I know, I think, um, who was it? Lindsay Gillian was talking about, um, Premum, I think it is. There's an app where you can do OPKs, which I want to check that one out. Um, Okay. Are you still ending your TTC journey at the end of 2018? So as I said a bit ago, I may extend it um, until May of 2019. We'll see. I'm meeting with the RE on October 20th, and we'll kind of figure out what our next steps are. And so I'm open to that um, if it, you know, gets me a little bit closer to the baby. Hopefully I'll have the baby before then. Um, okay, what else do we have? Since this cycle is canceled, will you and Blue still baby dance, which is sex? Um, if so, what if you got pregnant? Will that exclude the contract? So this one is an interesting question because I'm not sure if it's about me specifically or if you're interested in um, known donor contracts. So it tickled me a little bit. With that in mind, I will try to answer for both. I would not do anything intentional to avoid my contract. That would defeat the purpose of having the contract. I would expose myself to a lot of uh, risk without the agreement. In the strictest sense, I was under medical care this cycle. However, because the law is still being defined, let's suppose I was to become pregnant and I was challenged for parental rights, which I think is what you're saying. Like if it's voided, <clears throat> would I lose my parental rights? Uh, I would have the agreement to demonstrate what the intentions were of myself and of the known donor at the time that we entered into the agreement. And so I would have that sort of as a basis, the foundation of the arrangement. I would do my best to set or, you know, settle the matter um, privately and amicably. Uh, it's in both of our interests to do that. We, we stand more to lose, I believe, than to gain by uh, avoiding that because you could potentially void out everything in the contract and, and then that becomes risky. So I don't know why either of us would want to do that. Again, I'm not a lawyer. I understood what I was willing to risk and not willing to risk, which is why I hired a lawyer and went through what my concerns were. And he talked me through the law and the case law and specifics about New York. So if you're having this question because you want to know about no donor um, agreements, I would say contact a local a local lawyer, right? Someone who is in your area who knows what the laws are um, for you specifically because they're not federal laws, they're state laws. Um, sometimes there are city laws, like here in New York, there's a separate, um, there are separate city laws. Um, just so that you're covered because I don't want you to make a decision, um, you know, based on what I'm saying. And also, the template uh, agreements on the internet are not, they, those haven't held up in court. Um, so I would, you know, I would strongly recommend hiring an attorney. That's all I have to say on that one. Okay. Um, 
How do you fit in all of your supplements and any tips for taking them throughout the day? So yeah, I have a case, um, a, a day case and an evening case for the supplements. And I take the day case to work, I set it on my desk, and as the day goes, I munch on my supplements. Um, I've kind of learned like which ones have to be taken with food, um, which ones need to be taken with a drink or not a drink or not milk or not orange juice or not milk but not dairy. Um, so just over time, because I've been taking them about a year now, I've learned that. And then in the evening I have those. I have a night pack and I take those. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of have a rhythm down, but I think for, like when I take the Femera, I set an alarm to remind myself because that has to be taken at the exact same time. Um, so that one is like a little bit different, but supplements, I, I kind of have that one down to a science now. Uh, what are some important keys to staying positive and optimistic through all the treatments and negativity that can arise? First and foremost, I would say keep a TTC squad. Like have a few uh, people that you can lean on uh, when you get down who can help lift you up. I think that's important. Someone who's a phone call away or a text away because it does get hard. Um, I think also having time for yourself. I think the negativity can get to you. I've seen it across a lot of the TTC channels where ladies have mentioned about people trying to be helpful and coming across as negative or people you know offering suggestions and it being um, perceived as negative so I think you, you have to have a thick skin um, if you're going to share the journey people are going to give you unsolicited information you know there's a part of us that we're sharing and we're not asking and then you know people will tell us well don't worry you're just get over it or it's okay if you don't have a baby or they'll say things like well how long are you gonna try this and it is offensive like how long are you gonna try it implies that you're not gonna have a baby right um, because otherwise you would try it until you had the baby but I don't think people mean any harm by it so I try to give them a pass I try to be mindful that I'm emotional and sensitive and also I take the opportunity to point out to someone when they are saying something why it could be perceived as negative um, in a nice way you know I think from one TTC sister to another, we know that we are emotional and vulnerable and raw. And so I think we have to be careful when we're making suggestions or telling someone uh, what they should or shouldn't be doing. At least I try to approach it that way. So I think with the people where you value those relationships, you have that conversation and you figure out a way forward. There are certain people you just don't share their journey with. Um, just, yeah, you just don't share it with them because they're, they're not going to be able to be supportive. And I have... Um, isolated people by sharing my journey I have and it's unfortunate but it is something that I want and I feel that you know that's who I am and the people who love me will accept me for who I am and what I want and not judge me and those who have judged me or decided you know for whatever reason um, that they can't support the journey then it's fine it's where I am in life and um, you know I wish them well so I think just being firm in what you believe in, having a good TTC squad, um, meditation is amazing, um, coloring is amazing, yoga is amazing, staying grounded and centered, um, filling yourself up. Oh, and lavender Epsom salt baths are amazing. <laughs> so yeah, just trying to like find your happy place as often as you can and visit it and um, have a strong support group if you can find it. Uh, one or two TTC gals, whether it's on the internet or Instagram um, or in real life, having you know someone you can talk to or a therapist um, that helps too. All right, if you had to choose a top three or non-negotiable must-have supplement fertility aid, what would those be? Number one, acupuncture. I think acupuncture is amazing. Um, it helps me relax. It's helped lengthen my little phase. Um, it just helps open up things in my mind. I love the way it feels. I love the way that I feel afterward. It's also helped me out in a couple of pinches. Um, when like the one time I had the thin lining, I did the moxibustion and acupuncture and that helped. And I just think overall, it's like a nice treat for myself. Um, as well as helping my overall health and fertility and so that I think that's my number one and then the other two are um, DHEA and ubiquinol um, yeah those those are my go-to ubiquinol is giving me a lot of energy and I feel like DHEA is working up my ovaries and so um, compared to where I started so yeah those are my go-to's. Nanette887 says, did you experience any side effects or delayed ovulation when you took any of the supplements you were describing in your past video? 
I did. So the one negative side effect I had was from the DHEA. I got oilier skin. I've always had oily skin, but I had oilier skin. And the positive side effect I had from the Ubiquinol was more energy. Those are the only ones I noticed. I didn't have a delayed ovulation. Um, although, wait, I take that back. I did have a delayed ovulation when I was taking the melatonin on an unmedicated cycle. That happened in July. So yes, that, that's another negative side effect. Baby Name Guru 84 Hey girl, hey. Would you consider trying IVF if IUI continue to fail? Why or why not? Uh, yes, I think I'm open to considering it, providing I understand what the full risks are for my health. I've mentioned before, I have one kidney. There's not a lot of... Um, Cases where that has happened, where they, you know, people with one kidney have been given this medication. So I just want to make sure that not only am I um, getting a baby, but that I'm here to take care of the baby. Yeah. Serial mom. Hey, hey, serial mom. Uh, last vlog, I saw you mention you were stopping TTC end of the year. Will you try IVF before that? And if you have multiple in babies to freeze, will you continue until baby? Basically, will IVF change your timeline and IVF just be the last treatment? Good question. So the current plan is to try IVF before it's all said and done. And to your point, um, if I have multiple blastocysts, yeah, I'm going to try until I am out of blastocysts or and or have a baby. Um, you know, I would hope and pray that I have one or two. Um, I would only transfer one at a time. And yeah, I would hope for the best. So yeah, IVF may change the timeline, but I think hard out is going to be my 48th birthday, which is uh, May 7th, 2019. All right, and then last but not least, um, from Verkosha, lifelong commitment with the Alexanders. Um, first and foremost, you have my um, prayers and deepest sympathies. I know that you had your lap surgery and um, they removed your left tube and there's a blockage on your right tube um, or completely blocked. I'm praying for you. I hope the Cerepep days and the tea works. Um, we're going to speak that into existence. You're going to have your baby with your husband soon. Um, just a little work on your part. Uh, anything worth having is worth fighting for. So I just want to say that. And your question is, are we going to do a meet and greet? I would love to do a meet and greet. Um, I wanted to get all the fam together in Clearwater, Florida in October. Um, there's a jazz festival there and I thought that would be like a nice thing to do for that weekend and that gets us, I believe, out of hurricane system. Um, one, I need help putting it together and two, I need to know if there's interest. I, I want to be cognizant of the fact that people are worried about their money, right? Especially the TTC. Um, it's coming up against the holidays because then Thanksgiving is uh, November and Christmas and or Hanukkah or whatever you celebrate. Um, are coming up in December and so I I don't want to um, have anyone overextend themselves so I guess if anyone or everyone is still interested or whomever is still interested let me know down below and then I'll start like a group chat or group email and we can figure out the logistics uh, I'm thinking like Friday Saturday Sunday we would arrive Friday evening um, we would leave Sunday afternoon so we'd have like brunch together we do some sort of events on Saturday have cocktail hour Friday night um, if that sounds interesting and people can get to Florida let me know and I'll, I'll put that in motion um, but I hadn't done anything with that because we kind of had like lukewarm um, response to it and I would love to meet as many of you as possible I would love for you all to connect so that you just have like a strong TTC family and uh, we're all helping and lifting each other up all right those are all the questions I was asked um, hopefully that helps thank you so much for sending me the questions both on Instagram and on YouTube I appreciate it and I got some via email um, yeah thank you for watching the channel and for your support as always and, and I'll talk to you guys later bye Mwah. baby dust to you all I see the crystal raindrops fall and the beauty of it all is when the sun comes shining through to make those rainbows in my mind when I think of you sometime and I want to spend some time with you.